So you just hoid a whole bunch of money at Samsung for one of these fresh new Galaxy S24 series blowers. You want to know how to get the most out of it, including all those AI features that they won't stop banging on about. Well, your Uncle Spurt has you covered. Here's some of the best hidden bits of the Samsung Galaxy S24 series. Lots of tips and tricks and stuff that you should just try out. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, including plenty more on these three shiny buggers, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, first of all, all three Galaxy S24 series smartphones run Samsung's own One UI 6.1 launcher. So you can expect a very similar software experience on this trio. The only major difference is the fact you've got that S Pen stylus tucked away in a bottom orifice on the S24 Ultra. But pretty much all of these tips and tricks should work on all three of these blowers. And if you're used to Samsung smartphones, the good news is that One UI 6 has been given a proper bit of spit and polish with some fresh new fonts, some neat icon labels and other aesthetical updates. So it all looks proper spiffing, what what. Now on the S24 phones, you can drag down the notifications bar from anywhere on screen. You don't have to reach all the way up to the top end of that phone and risk putting your thumb out of joint. Drag down once for your notifications and drag down again to access the control center with fast access to all of your toggles. And this is also where you'll find fast access to all of your connected devices, all your smart home goodies. But with One UI 6.1, you can actually have a more iPhone-esque layout for that. So instead of having to drag down twice for the control center, what you can do is tap this wee pen icon up in the top right corner and you'll see one option that says quick settings, instant access. Just turn that on. And from now on, all you've got to do is swipe down from that top right corner and you'll have fast access to all of that stuff. Make sure you are swiping from the far right edge, otherwise it will not work. And the good news is if you are using a plus or an ultra, you can still drag down the quick toggles with a double swipe like so. Otherwise, yeah, you'd probably end up breaking your hand. Ah, oh, goddammit. And with this handy wee shortcut, you should save valuable seconds every day, giving you more time to enjoy my splendid videos. Hooray. And as always, if you want to, you can edit the toggles which appear in this menu as well as the order that they appear in so you can prioritize any you use a lot. Now, I do like a bit of always on display action here on the Galaxy S24 series, but by default, it's got an Apple iPhone style one where all it does is kind of dim down the screen, but you can still see your wallpaper and everything. And the problem with this is it does sap the battery life a bit faster. But don't worry, you can change it back into a regular non-wanky version. All you got to do is dive on into the settings and then scroll down to lock screen and AOD. AOD, of course, standing for always on display. Tap your way into there and then just toggle this option, show lock screen wallpaper. There you go, no more of this Apple tomfoolery. And inside of the always on display settings, you can also schedule when the always on display will show. I recommend doing that so it's not on all night long. And also in One UI 6.1, Samsung has upgraded the search feature. So it's now smarter and a bit more helpful. So for instance, if I start typing in camera, I don't just get a shortcut to the camera app. I can also get quick shortcuts to various functions within that app. So I can instantly jump into recording a video, taking a selfie, etc. And do know you can also long press on an app when it pops up in that search to again, jump straight to a specific feature. Now, if you tuned into the launch of the Galaxy S24 series, you might have noticed that Samsung mentioned AI just a couple of times. In fact, if you took a shot every time you heard it, well, after about 20 minutes, you would have turned into a human sprinkler. Now, quite a lot of these AI features are actually genuinely helpful. So, for instance, if you're a student, you do business stuff, whatever, you find you record a lot of lectures or meetings or whatever using the voice recorder, you'll find a fresh new transcribe feature, which is very helpful indeed. And this can actually transcribe into different languages as well. Translation is a major part of Samsung's AI shenanigans. You can even use translation when you're on a phone call. And it's a wee bit stop start, but as you can see, lots of languages are supported to begin with. And you can actually download these language packs so you can use the translation when the phone is offline as well. Now the transcription isn't 100% perfect. That's for damn sure. Occasionally you can get a wee bit confused but it can tell between different speakers separating it out. And more impressive is the summary option. Just give that a wee tap and it will actually pull out the major points from the conversation. That's actually one of my favorite features. It's a bit terrifying just how good it is. I also rather like the new chat assist features built into Samsung's own keyboard. So for instance, type out a message in whatever messaging app and then tap this wee button here with the stars 
You can check your spelling and grammar, or you can completely change the style of your message. So for instance, if you're sending a message to your boss, you can make it sound proper professional, which more often than not is just accidentally hilarious. You can also just add in emojis to make you sound about 12. I'm not sure what Thirsty Thursday is all about. It's actually a Monday, but hey ho. And you can also pretend to be super clever and have it typed out in a different language. Again, from any of those that are supported. Now, another AI-related feature that's probably more for curiosity's sake than actually genuinely useful is the generative wallpaper feature. This can help create something custom to your specification. So for instance, let's go for an imaginary wallpaper. You can tap any of these highlighted words to change them up. So I'm going to go for a surreal castle made of corduroy in shades of green and teal. Why not? Let's have a bit of that. And then there you have it. Various corduroy castles. They're all the colour of snot. And this would definitely be a much better feature if you could type whatever you wanted in there. Like that time I AI generated a picture of James Corden drowning in a lake of lava. But, you know, whatever, it's a start. Now, one AI feature that I thought would be utter cack, but which is actually, again, pretty bloody useful, is the ring to search feature. Now, say you spot something in a shop that looks really good, you really want it, but it's too expensive. You want to see if you can find it online a bit cheaper, or you see a pair of kicks that someone's wearing, you're like, oh, those look nice, what are those? Well, all you've got to do is long press this gesture navigation bar here at the bottom until the Google search bar pops up and everything goes all crazy. And then all you got to do is draw a ring around whatever it is you want to search for. And the Google search results will pop right up. Now, I found this was particularly useful on a recent trip to Germany. You'd be wandering down the street, come across some impressive building or monument or whatever. Just aim the camera at it, draw a ring around it. And nine times out of ten, at least, you'll get accurate information on whatever it is you're gawping at. Now, I don't use Samsung Internet very often. I prefer Google Chrome. But there's a couple of good features tucked in here now. One especially good if you like to listen to podcasts or music or anything like that on a service such as YouTube. Now often if you're playing a video in the likes of YouTube and you minimize the Samsung internet browser, well that video will of course just stop playing so you have to have the window up at all times to actually continue streaming the video. But no longer, just tap these three lines down in the bottom right corner Go to settings, scroll down until you see useful features and you'll see there's a new background play option. Well, let's just turn that wee bugger on. And now you'll see if we head back to that video, get it playing, just turn up the volume. Will you actually notice any real difference in the camera tech, the gaming experience? So you'll see that even though Samsung internet was shunted away out of the foreground, that video continued to play. Cracking stuff. And this next feature I've got very mixed feelings about, although it can be very useful indeed if you're reading a lengthy web page and you actually just want to drag the main points out of it. Just tap this star icon down below and then hit summarize. And again, all of the main points will be pulled out in an easy to read format. I'll say I have mixed feelings because I actually used to be a journalist and if I'd spent many hours writing thousands of words on something only to have it summarized into a few very short paragraphs, I'd probably be slightly miffed. But these days, when time is precious, that could actually be genuinely useful. And with the Galaxy S24 series and a bit of One UI 6.1, you've got quite a few updates to the camera experience as well, including, yeah, quite a few AI updates. What a surprise. As always, you can quick load that camera at any time with a quick double push of the power button. Or alternatively, Samsung also now offers a custom camera widget, which you can add to your desktops. This allows you to load up the camera with any of these modes. The front or rear camera in various bits such as the portrait mode, food mode if you take a lot of snaps of whatever you're about to shove into your face, give it a single take action, all that good stuff. You can also change up the name and the picture. Then there you have it, there's our custom camera widget. So at any point I can give that a quick tap and then I'm immediately launched into the front camera ready to shoot a bit of vlogging action. Hi guys! And as usual, of course, you can stack these widgets if you've got a few different camera modes you want to quick load into. Just drag one widget on top of the other and they will become stacked. And you'll also find that with the Samsung Galaxy S24 series and One UI 6.1, editing photos is a lot easier than it used to be. Just swipe up and as you can see, your Galaxy S24 blower can suggest some edits you might want to make. So with a landscape shot like this, you can actually change it into a 24-hour time-lapse. Quite handy if you can't be asked to just stand there for a full 24 hours recording an actual time lapse, although obviously the effects aren't quite as impressive as they would be in real life. 
One really handy feature if you're in the habit of taking photos through windows and the like is Arrays Reflections. You can see there we've still got a couple of reflections left in this particular offering, but more often than not it completely eliminates all that stuff. It's definitely far better than it has any right to be. And you've also got the Remaster feature. As you can see this again just automatically spruces up a shot on your behalf making it brighter when needed, a bit sharper. And I love how you can see the before and after effects so you can decide for yourself whether it's worth saving. And also you can long press on any person, human, whatever in any of your photos and then click save as sticker which you can then use in your messaging shenanigans. And before I bugger off one more AI feature which I quite like when you're messing around with photos and videos and the like is the automatic slow motion. So start any video and then long press your finger on it and as you'll see that action will be slowed right down. This actually cleverly inserts extra frames where there were none before but as you can see here it kind of struggles with hands and other bits that get a bit too close to the camera. Anyways there you have it my lovelies that is my full extensive tips and tricks guide for the Samsung Galaxy S24 series. What I reckon you should do first with your S24, S24 Plus or S24 Ultra. Of course, by no means comprehensive, I may well have missed off your own favourite features from One UI 6.1 and the S24 blowers. If that's the case, definitely clue me in as to what a massive knob piece I am down in the comments below. Let us know what your personal features are. Stay tuned for my in-depth review of this trio. I've actually been using the Galaxy S24 for the past week. Full review of that coming tomorrow followed by the Plus and the Ultra as well. But anyway, as I say, please do pop subscribe, ding that notifications bell, all the usual YouTube jazz, and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.